Today, I want to talk about one of the best kept secrets for homeschooling success. It's a must have that should be in every homeschooler's tool belt. And that is narration. Now, some of you may know about narration, but narration is not found in every kind of curriculum out there. It's particularly something that is discussed in classical types of homeschooling like Charlotte Mason or a more neoclassical approach like the well-trained mind or classical conversations. But it is a really important tool and that it helps your child learn how to speak in very clear and um, precise ways as well as writing. It's really the way that I suggest all children will really flourish in their writing skills and in their public speaking skills. So the concept of narration is really rather simple. If you've never heard of it, what narration means is when you teach a lesson or read a book to your child, something that they've learned within the day, you will ask them to narrate back to you in full sentences what they learn. That is simply what narration means. But there are different stages to narration and there are different um, expectations at different levels of what you would expect your child to be able to narrate back to you. So at the beginning of narration, now it will be up to you um, as to how rigorous you would like to do it. Uh, you could really do narration for every single one of your subjects or you could just choose one subject of the day and do narration for that. But the more practice that they get, the better and better your student will become at speaking in very clear and precise ways, being able to uh, relay information very clearly to others, as well as being able to write very comprehensive sentences. So when you begin, you may choose, um, let's say, history. You will read together your history lesson, and at the end of the class, you might say to them, you might ask them a different question. You might say, what stood out the most to you in this lesson? Or you might ask, what was the main point to this lesson? Or to a younger child, what was your favorite part of the lesson? And you will begin by asking them to tell you in their own words but you're going to encourage them to always tell you the answers to those questions in complete sentences. At first, you might get really annoyed at always having to remind your student, that's not a complete sentence, can you reword that in a complete sentence? Or you may have to show them what a complete sentence is. Another way of showing them what complete sentences are is in addition to them verbally telling you um, what, uh, you know, the, their favorite part of the lesson was, they will tell you, then you will write it out for them in a complete sentence using their own words, but filling in maybe a couple of the gaps to make it a complete sentence. And then you will get them to copy out that sentence. So that is the beginning stages. So if they aren't yet ready uh, knowing how to write, um, it could be a, a, pa a page that they will trace. Um, or if they aren't able to spell well yet, um, it could be a, sen a sentence that you have written for them and they will just copy it out word for word. Now, one thing that I do in my narrations, especially at the beginning, is spelling is not um, an essential part of it. I want them to be able to come up with the vocabulary and to come up with the thoughts and the ideas without worrying about not knowing how to spell it. So I just tell them, sound it out the best way you know how. Afterwards, I'll show them, well, that's great try at spelling out that word and here's what it really looks like and over time they will begin to memorize that and learn how to spell those words but I don't make that a focus of the narration. So that's how I would begin. Now in my homeschool, in our homeschool, I tried to do it for almost every subject. So when we did science, give me one sentence about what we learned about. This also helps to review each uh, subject you're kind of checking to see their comprehension in each subject. So it's killing two birds with one stone. 
you're not only um, helping them to formulate ideas and thoughts into complete sentences and complete ideas. You know, they might grab bits and pieces, but when they're able to string it along into a sentence or two, those ideas start to become concrete in their minds and they're absorbing in a better way what they have learned. So you're killing the two birds with one stone. You're reviewing the lesson as well as getting them to learn how to formulate uh, c clear and concise sentences. So you can do it for your history and your science and your literature, of course, that's an excellent thing. You can even do it for math. You can do it for every single subject. Or as I said, you could pick a subject each day to do it on, to focus on. If, it, if it's too overwhelming, if you're a student really, my daughter was very resistant to writing in grade one. So I always got her to do narrate verbally, but at least once in the day, I would get her to copy out one of the sentences that I wrote out for her. But each year that would build on and on and on. So after they've moved on to verbally telling you, they're then going to start, uh, so they will verbally um, narrate back to you uh, what the question that you've asked that you want them to focus on, you know, review of the day, their favorite part, uh, what stood out the most to them. And you will begin with one sentence and then you may the next year have two sentences and the next year maybe three to four sentences. So you'll add it on that way, but you'll also begin to just get them to write out their responses. They don't necessarily have to verbalize it to you anymore. They are now independently as they progress. So Olivia, my daughter, is was in grade three this past year. And this past year, she would, at the beginning of the year, I would have to still correct and say that's not quite grammatically complete sentence. It's an awkward sentence. It's in a run-on sentence and show her where, you know, I, I start to... Punctuation is also not a huge emphasis at the beginning. So don't worry, uh, parents, if they aren't using proper punctuation. Again, I will go back and show them this is the correct place to put in commas. This would work better with a semicolon or make them two separate sentences, things like that. But it's not something that I'm expecting them to do well, but I'm going to correct it and show them the right way afterwards, but still say way to go. You did a great sentence here. This would make it even better. And uh, well, I think I got lost of where I was saying. So you would you would definitely increase um, the number. So Olivia would write, you know, one to two sentences at the beginning of the year. Um, near the end of the year, I had her doing three to four sentences. And sometimes her three to four sentences were really long. I said, really, Olivia? Because she, she actually began to really love to write. And I want to do even more description. I want to, you know, to a point where you then have to show your student how to be concise. Because being concise is also... Uh, an important thing. Being able to relay your thoughts in a very clear and concise way without going on and on and on, which I have a tendency to do, especially in these videos. So that is a skill that you're also teaching them as well. So your student might be able to write on and on and on about something in many ways of describing it, but that also needs to be, they need to be trained and taught how to be concise and how to convey the facts in very you know, two to three short sentences, how to make that very clear and concise. So there are four types of writing composition, and this helps them develop that writing style. So in the early years, they're starting with what's called narration and then description. Later on, they were going to learn expository and what's the other one? Persuasion, persuasive writing. But at the beginning, narration, just narrating back the facts, regurgitating basically, the facts that you've learned in a concise way and descriptive, learning how to describe things, learning how to use um, adjectives and adverbs to describe and make your writing more um, lovely. So these are, uh, narration is quite simple, but then you can see that it can go very in depth and you can use it all the way up to high school. I've been told by people that uh, homeschool high schoolers that they continue to use narration in their high school, but they particularly go back to the verbal narration. And the reason for that is that their student learns how to speak fluently, clearly, and concisely. It's excellent for public speaking, and it's excellent just in general, in their workplace, uh, everywhere that they go, in their church. Um, being able to speak clearly is a skill and it's something that all we want all of our students to learn. 
So narration helps with that because we often, we learn sometimes to communicate in these short, uh, fragmented phrases and sentences. And we don't often stop to think about our words. But when we have to think about what we are saying, was it clear? Was it concise? Am I relaying all the information that I intended to relay? Narration really helps with that. So narration is something that will help your student from the very, very beginning to the very, very end. And that's why I say that narration is probably the most important tool to have in your homeschooling tool belt. Now, I wanted to highlight a curriculum that really um, emphasizes narration. It's really the main focus is learning how to narrate um, in verbally and in writing. And that is writing with ease. Writing with ease, this one is the level three, but I do have level ones and level two. They look just like this, same thickness. And what, with, what writing with ease does, this is by the well-trained mind, is it, you read a short passage from classical pieces of literature, and then you begin to help your student understand what narrating is. They might hear the story, but they might not be, they may not be quite at the stage of being able to pick out the important parts and put them back into a good chronological order to relay what the main message of the passage was about. So I have here uh, the workbook for, uh, I have it backwards, but level one. Level one is a good example of what a beginning stage would look like. And so you um, are reading through a classical piece of literature. And I'll give you an example here. Um, the narrated passage for, I'm just gonna try to find a good example for you here. Uh, they start out extremely basic, short, 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 but I'll go a little bit further because they do get to be, well, like a page long passage, nothing too long. But here they are reading a passage from The Adventures of Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. And after you read this short passage, and I know this is backwards, but that's the length of this passage, and this is for level one, you then are going to ask the students, um, what problem did Pinocchio have at the beginning of the story? Um, and the student has to reply back in a full sentence and the expected answer they have for, uh, for him here is he was hungry. That's a full sentence. What animal was he hung as hungry as? And in this passage, it says he was as hungry as a bear. So you're going through these questions and then at the end, you're going to ask the student, what was one thing you remember about this passage? And you're wanting them to recall as much detail as possible but in a concise way. That's the hope, that's the eventual goal. So you can at first help them along with the answer. They're gonna be verbalizing this to you. They might say, well, he was hungry. What was he as hungry as? That kind of thing. And you're gonna help. So he was as, he, Pinocchio was really hungry and he was as hungry as a bear. That would be an acceptable answer for this passage for a grade one level student. And she would help them get to that point. That's the point you wanna to get to and that's the expectation for level one. And then of course for level two, it might be that they would be able to do two to three good complete sentences by level three, three to four sentences and so on. And then it builds and then they start to go into other forms of things, but that's the basics. And this is a really excellent um, curriculum. I'll try to show you uh, the reverse <laughs> image. Here it is here. So the, the well-trained mind writing with ease, and that's level one, and the other one is level three. And this one looks like it's much smaller, but that's because I ripped out all of the work pages at the end, um, which now I usually just uh, get them to write in uh, duotang or loose leaf. But that's all I have for you. I hope that was helpful. It has really helped us in our homeschool. And I think it's a way of really helping your child go beyond, go beyond some of the curriculum that just sometimes you just wanna check it off um, on your to-do list. This is an excellent way of helping your student stay on track, keep moving forward. And sometimes we don't even do it completely in the school day. I might be washing the dishes, and call Olivia over and say, hey, uh, what was the main point? And she knows that I will do this to her. What was the main point of the passage we read earlier? And she is gonna tell me in full sentences. And you know, by the end, after a year or maybe two, 
your student will always know to answer in complete sentences. And it's funny because sometimes when we're just talking, she will just answer me in complete sentences because it has become a habit and it's, which is a good thing, but it's also funny. Anyways, I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.